Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now yesterday we took a look at the Athlon 3000G but I slightly overlooked one teeny tiny thing, the overclocking ability of the integrated Vega 3 graphics. I mean one of the biggest appeals of this chip is that it's fully unlocked and to not overclock the integrated graphics, well that was a silly move on my part. So I thought we'd go back today, take a look at a few of the more demanding games we tested yesterday and see what difference can be seen if we boost the clock speed of the GPU from 1100 MHz to 1650 MHz. We'll also be keeping that 3.8 GHz CPU overclock as well. And I call myself a tech YouTuber, leaving out details like that. So let me just show you in CPU Z here the full specs once again. Here is the 3000G overclock to 3.8 GHz stable. We're also using 3200 MHz DDR4 memory, 16 gigs of DDR4 to be precise, just like yesterday. And as you can see in the graphical section here, we have the Vega 3 graphics overclocked from 1100 MHz to 1650 MHz. This is as simple as adjusting the setting in the BIOS. So the four games I want to take another look at are Battlefield 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, Dirt Rally 2 and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. These were the games that struggled the most yesterday, yet with a few tweaks we're still able to manage 30 FPS. Just about, I think Battlefield 5 came close, but it didn't quite hit it. So let's run back through the games, put the comparative results on screen before and after the overclock, and then we'll discuss the difference. So first up it is of course Battlefield 5, once again at the low preset with 720p and DX12 mode enabled, we are now seeing 37 frames per second as opposed to yesterday's 29. The 1% and 0.1% lows have also increased significantly from 23 to 30 and 14 to 24 respectively. In fact the new 1% low with the overclocked Vega 3i GPU is pretty much the same as the old average with the Vega 3 at the stock clocks of 1100 megahertz. A nice improvement to start with. So yesterday in Red Dead Redemption 2 we had to set the resolution scale to 50% in order to achieve a 30 FPS average, but today I decided to go in with 100% resolution scale, so we're running at full 720p resolution. Now with the stock graphics clock, the Vega 3 iGPU struggled with around 19 to 20 FPS, but as soon as we overclocked it, well, we were so close to achieving 30. This wasn't quite possible, but I did note that if we turn the resolution resolution down one step further to 1024 by 768 instead of dropping the resolution scale this would give us the 30 fps average that we so wanted in yesterday's video again it's a nice improvement and actually makes red dead redemption 2 playable somewhat albeit at a lower resolution if you've got a 1024 by 768 or 720p monitor though well it won't look as bad as opposed to playing on a 1080p screen with this res it was another delightful improvement in Dirt Rally 2. Yesterday the average was around 31, but today that jumped up around 12 frames per second, and now we were seeing 43. The 1% and 0.1% lows are also improved, and overall it's a smoother experience. This really is a pretty good chip, I have to admit. Yesterday I thought it was pretty good, you know, two cores, four threads, integrated graphics gaming, all that. It could run things at 30 FPS at a push, but today with this overclock, well, I like it even more. It's making very light work of Dirt Rally 2 and you could probably explore the settings a little more. There's just a little more overhead now to play around with the graphical features. So yesterday with PUBG, we were just on the cusp of 30 frames per second, hovering around 32. There were certainly some drops, but with this overclock today, look at the result now, at least 40 frames per second here, improved 1% and 0.1% lows. A simple change of the setting in the BIOS is all it takes to get this FPS gain, and what's better, you can still do this with the stock cooler. Both the CPU and GPU are overclocked with the stock Athlon cooler. I said yesterday it screams, and it's still screaming, but aside from the whine, it's not that loud, to be honest, but I'd still recommend replacing it with even a stock Ryzen cooler if you have one handy, or if not, perhaps purchase one for a few pounds as this will help keep things very quiet. 
The newly overclocked Vega 3 graphics also allowed me to play the Outer Worlds, albeit with 720p resolution and then a 70% resolution scale. Yesterday, I couldn't even play this without the game freezing entirely, so this is a nice fix in a way. And what's more, we're seeing over 30 frames per second. Again, it doesn't look the best, but at least it runs. The Outer Worlds is a fantastic game, and to get it running on this entry-level chip, well, it's made my day. I know, I know, I should have included this in yesterday's results. I didn't think too much of it at the time. I tried manually adjusting the integrated graphics clock in the BIOS, but I kept finding that it was resetting. However, after a BIOS update, it seemed to resolve the issue, and it's as simple as adjusting a couple of things in order to achieve this new speed. I'll, I'll put in the description how to do it, should any of you want to do the same. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you plan on getting the 3000G. I have to say I like it even more now than I did yesterday. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.